Vulcan is a small hypothetical planet that was proposed to exist in an orbit between Mercury and the Sun. Attempting to explain peculiarities of Mercury's orbit, the 19th-century French mathematician Urbain Le Verrier hypothesized that they were the result of another planet, which he named Vulcan. A number of reputable investigators became involved in the search for Vulcan, and despite occasional claimed observations, no such planet was ever confirmed. Peculiarities in Mercury's orbit have now been explained by Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. Searches of data gathered by NASA's two stereo spacecraft have failed to find any vulcanoids that could have accounted for claimed observations of Vulcan. It is doubtful that there are any vulcanoids larger than 5.7 km miles in diameter. There are a number of Mercury-crossing asteroids, but all have a semi-major axis larger than Mercury's. Topic. Argument for existence In 1840, François Arago, the director of the Paris Observatory, suggested to the French mathematician Urbain Le Verrier that he work on the topic of the planet Mercury's orbital motion around the Sun. The goal of this study was to construct a model based on Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion and gravitation. By 1843, Le Verrier published his provisional theory on the subject, which would be tested during a transit of Mercury across the face of the Sun in 1843. As it turned out, predictions from Le Verrier's theory failed to match the observations. Le Verrier renewed his work and, in 1859, published a more thorough study of Mercury's motion. This was based on a series of meridian observations of the planet as well as 14 transits. The rigor of this study meant that any differences from observation would be caused by some unknown factor. Indeed, there still remained some discrepancy. During Mercury's orbit, its perihelion advances by a small amount each orbit, technically called perihelion precession. The phenomenon is predicted by classical mechanics, but the observed value differed from the predicted value by the small amount of 43 arcseconds per century. Le Verrier postulated that the excess precession could be explained by the presence of a small planet inside the orbit of Mercury, and he proposed the name Vulcan for this object. In Roman mythology, Vulcan was the god of beneficial and hindering fire, including the fire of volcanoes, making it an apt name for a planet so close to the Sun. Le Verrier's recent success in discovering the planet Neptune using the same techniques lent veracity to his claim, and astronomers around the world attempted to observe a new planet there, but nothing was ever found. Topic. Search On the 22nd of December 1859, Le Verrier received a letter from French physician and amateur astronomer Edmond Modeste Lescarbo, who claimed to have seen a transit of the hypothetical planet earlier in the year. Le Verrier took the train to the village of Orgères and Beauce, some 70 kilometers (43 miles) southwest of Paris, where Lescarbo had built himself a small observatory. Le Verrier arrived unannounced and proceeded to interrogate the man. Lescarbo described in detail how, on the 26th of March 1859, he noticed a small black dot on the face of the sun, which he was studying with his modest 3.75 inches (95 mm refractor. Thinking it to be a sunspot, Lescarbo was not at first surprised, but after some time had passed, he realized that it was moving. Having observed the transit of Mercury in 1845, he guessed that what he was observing was another transit, but of a previously undiscovered body. He took some hasty measurements of its position and direction of motion, and using an old clock and a pendulum with which he took his patient's pulses, he estimated the duration of the transit at 1 hour, 17 minutes and 9 seconds. Le Verrier was satisfied that Lescarbo had seen the transit of a previously unknown planet. On 2 January 1860 he announced the discovery of Vulcan to a meeting of the Académie des Sciences in Paris. Lescarbo, for his part, was awarded the Légion d'Honneur and invited to appear before numerous learned societies. Not everyone accepted the veracity of Lescarbo's discovery. However, an eminent French astronomer, Emmanuel Liais, who was working for the Brazilian government in Rio de Janeiro in 1859, claimed to have been studying the surface of the Sun with a telescope twice as powerful as Lescarbot's at the very moment that Lescarbo said he observed his mysterious transit. Liais, therefore, was in a condition to deny, in the most positive manner, the passage of a planet over the Sun at the time indicated. Based on Lescarbot's transit. 
Le Verrier computed Vulcan's orbit, it supposedly revolved about the Sun in a nearly circular orbit at a distance of 21 million kilometers 0.14 astronomical units, 13 million miles. The period of revolution was 19 days and 17 hours, and the orbit was inclined to the ecliptic by 12 degrees and 10 minutes an incredible degree of precision. As seen from the Earth, Vulcan's greatest elongation from the Sun was 8 degrees. Numerous reports all of them unreliable began to reach Le Verrier from other amateurs who claimed to have seen unexplained transits. Some of these reports referred to observations made many years earlier, and many could not be properly dated. Nevertheless, Le Verrier continued to tinker with Vulcan's orbital parameters as each new reported sighting reached him. He frequently announced dates of future Vulcan transits, and when these failed to materialize, he tinkered with the parameters some more. Among the earlier alleged observers of Vulcan, Capel Loft reported an opaque body traversing the Sun's disk on 6 January 1818. Gruthison, on 26 June 1819, reported seeing two small spots less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 on the sun round black and unequal in size pastorf on the 23rd of october 1822 24 and the 25th of july 1823 six times in 1834 on the 18th of october 1836 the 1st of november 1836 and on the 16th of february 1837 also claimed to have seen two spots the larger was 3 arcseconds across and the smaller 1.25 arcseconds shortly after 8 o'clock on the morning of the 29th of january 1860 far Russell and three other people in London saw an alleged transit of an intra-mercurial planet. An American observer, Richard Covington, many years later claimed to have seen a well-defined black spot progress across the Sun's disk around 1860, when he was stationed in Washington Territory. No. Observations. A Vulcan were made in 1861. Then, on the morning of the 22nd of March 1862, between 8 and 9 o'clock Greenwich time, another amateur astronomer, a Mr. Lummis of Manchester, England, saw a transit. His colleague, whom he alerted, also saw the event. Based on these two men's reports, two French astronomers, Benjamin Valls and Rodolphe Rado, independently calculated the object's supposed orbital period, with Valls deriving a figure of 17 days and 13 hours and Rado a figure of 19 days and 22 hours. On 8 May 1865, another French astronomer, Aristide Comberry, observed an unexpected transit from Istanbul, Turkey. Between 1866 and 1878, no reliable observations of the hypothetical planet were made. Then, during the total solar eclipse of July 29, 1878, two experienced astronomers, Professor James Craig Watson, the director of the Ann Arbor Observatory in Michigan, and Louis Swift, an amateur from Rochester, New York, both claimed to have seen a Vulcan-type planet close to the Sun. Watson, observing from separation, Wyoming, placed the planet about 2.5 degrees southwest of the Sun and estimated its magnitude at 4.5. Swift, who was observing the eclipse from a location near Denver, Colorado, saw what he took to be an intramercurial planet about 3 degrees southwest of the Sun. He estimated its brightness to be the same as that of Theta Cancri, a fifth magnitude star which was also visible during totality, about six or seven minutes from the planet. Theta Cancri and the planet were very nearly in line with the center of the Sun. Watson and Swift had reputations as excellent observers. Watson had already discovered more than 20 asteroids, while Swift had several comets named after him. Both described the color of their hypothetical intramercurial planet as red. Watson reported that it had a definite disk, unlike stars, which appear in telescopes as mere points of light and that its phase indicated that it was approaching superior conjunction. Both Watson and Swift had actually observed two objects they believed were not known stars, but after Swift corrected an error in his coordinates, none of the coordinates matched each other, nor known stars. The idea that four objects were observed during the eclipse generated controversy in scientific journals, and mockery from Watson's rival, C. H. F. Peters. Peters noted that the margin of error in the pencil and cardboard recording device Watson had used was large enough to plausibly include a bright known star. A skeptic of the Vulcan theory, Peters dismissed all the observations as mistaking known stars as planets. 
Astronomers continued searching for Vulcan during total solar eclipses in 1883, 1887, 1889, 1900, 1901, 1905, and 1908. Outside of eclipses, many false alarms were triggered by round sunspots that closely resembled planets in transit. Topic: Conclusion In 1915 Einstein's theory of relativity, an entirely different approach to understanding gravity from classical mechanics, solved the problem. His equations predicted exactly the observed amount of advance of Mercury's perihelion without any recourse to the existence of a hypothetical Vulcan. The new theory modified the predicted orbits of all planets, but the magnitude of the differences from Newtonian theory diminishes rapidly as one gets farther from the Sun. Also, Mercury's fairly eccentric orbit makes it much easier to detect the perihelion shift than is the case for the nearly circular orbits of Venus and Earth. Einstein's theory was empirically verified during the solar eclipse of May 29, 1919 by measuring the bending of sunlight. Astronomers generally quickly accepted that a large planet inside the orbit of Mercury could not exist, given the corrected equation of gravity. Vulcanoids Observing a planet inside the orbit of Mercury is difficult, since the telescope must be pointed very close to the Sun, where the sky is only dark during a solar eclipse. Also, an error in pointing the telescope can result in damage for the optics, and injury to the observer if viewing directly. The huge amount of light present even quite far away from the Sun can produce false reflections inside the optics, thus fooling the observer into seeing things that do not exist. The best observational strategy might be to monitor the Sun's disk for possible transits, but transits would only be seen from Earth provided the object orbits close enough to the ecliptic plane. A small, dark spot might be seen to move across the Sun's disk, as happens with transits of Mercury and Venus. In 1915, when Einstein successfully explained the apparent anomaly in Mercury's orbit, most astronomers abandoned the search for Vulcan. A few, however, remained convinced that not all the alleged observations of Vulcan were unfounded. Among these was Henry C. Corton, of Dowling College, New York. Studying photographic plates of the 1970 eclipse of the Sun, he and his associates detected several objects which appeared to be in orbits close to the Sun. Even accounting for artifacts, Corton felt that at least seven of the objects were real. Corton believed that an intramercurial planetoid between 130 and 180 kilometers (80 and 110 miles) in diameter was orbiting the Sun at a distance of about 0.1 astronomical units (15 million kilometers, 9,300,000 miles). Other images on his eclipse plates led him to postulate the existence of an asteroid belt between Mercury and the Sun. None of these claims has ever been substantiated after more than 40 years of observation. It has been surmised that some of these objects, and other alleged intramercurial objects, may exist, being nothing more than previously unknown comets or small asteroids. No such vulcanoid asteroids have been found, and searches have ruled out any such asteroids larger than about 6 kilometers 3.7 miles. Neither SOHO nor STEREO has detected a planet inside the orbit of Mercury. Topic. See also Fictional planets of the Solar System Hypothetical Moon of Mercury List of reported UFO sightings Nemesis hypothetical star Planets beyond Neptune Teich hypothetical planet Planet 9 Vulcan Star Trek Topic References Topic. Further reading Baum, Richard, Sheehan, William In Search of Planet Vulcan, The Ghost in Newton's Clockwork Machine. New York, Plenum Press. ISBN 0-306-45567-6. Levinson, Thomas The Hunt for Vulcan. And How Albert Einstein Destroyed a Planet, Discovered Relativity, and Deciphered the Universe. New York, Random House. ISBN 978-0812998986. The subject was also featured on an episode of Arthur C. Clarke's mysterious world entitled, Strange Skies, 
Originally broadcast on November 18, 1980. Topic: External links. Asimov, Isaac, 1975. The Planet That Wasn't. The Magazine of Fantasy and Science Fiction. Schleider, Paul, 2006. Vulcan, the Intra-Mercurial Planet, 1860 to 1916, 1971. The Nine Eight Planets, a multimedia tour of the Solar System, Appendix Seven, Hypothetical Planets, converted to HTML by Bill Arnett.